Peace to the gods. Peace to the gods. Let me get a uh let me get a mic check, mic check, mic check. Peace, peace, peace. Get everybody in real quick. Peace, peace, peace. How everybody doing today? Thumbs up, thumbs up. Hi from London in the UK. Peace, peace. What's happening? We're joining SPC. That's cool. Yes, I'm here on time today. Got it. I kind of tried to, you know, I'm trying to experiment and put the notification up, you know, a little in advance and see if uh, everybody gets the notification. You know, people are complaining about they don't get the notification. Um, today, I'm going to talk about a book. I want to talk about a couple of things. Um, this is book this is a real interesting book um, that is, uh, I tried to send it to somebody in federal prison and they returned it. So that means I must have to talk about it. I got to give um, props also because it's like y'all watching me out there, ain't you? You know, I used to tell people you could find PDFs very easily on the internet and all the books that used to be easy to find on the internet, then all of a sudden they're not easy to find anymore, which means that it is very important that SBC University stay up and running. Love the video for the males. It's a good video. Yeah, thank you about that. I just kind of did it on the fly. Somebody asked me what advice I would give to to young brothers, and um, you know, I just kind of just you know just went off the top of my head on some of the things. You know, just kind of reflected on some of the mistakes I made as a youth. And, you know, just kind of thought to myself, if I had to do it all over again, what would I do differently? A couple of things I forgot. Um, uh, but for the most part, I did. You know, I, I think I covered a lot of stuff. Peace, use of you, a lifesaver, been studying for years, and you give a clear understanding. I appreciate that. Um, and hopefully today we can get into some more discussion. Paper Arrows was good. But we're going to read from Fruit of the Poisonous Tree by Melvin Stamper. Melvin Stamper, Juris Doctorate is what it looks like right there. Free Fruit of the Poisonous Tree. We're going to do a little reading. We are going to read along today. So y'all grab you something to drink. And we're going to get into this book. All right. It's Fruit of the Poisonous Tree. Let me read the... Uh, uh, the introduction to it real quick. I always like to read the introduction of books, the forward of it. Get an idea who we're talking about right here. Okay. All right. All right, so let's get into this. It says, Melvin Stampa has experienced a remarkable life journey few of us will ever experience. His background in law and criminal investigation has enabled him to uncover facts of the crime of the millennium, exposing the motive along with the conspirators. The subtle and not-so-subtle threats from the government agencies that he was investigating merely served as a motivating force and, co and confirmation of his investigation. That's how I feel, too, like a lot of times 
you will get confirmation by the way these people react to things, trying to call you crazy and all this. But just look at their reaction, especially when you go in court and ask them what jurisdiction they're operating under. They don't want to tell you. Experience is the one factor we must all use in determining credibility of another. And Stanford's experience in law, analytical think, analytical thinking, and uh, detection rivals that of any other in the investigation of a crime involving government subterfuge and cover-up. This author served his country as a U.S. Marine in Southeast Asia, a police chief, railroad special agent, CIA intelligence source, industrial engineer, pilot, law professor, legal researcher, private investigator, and an, op- an ombudsman, which means all, all encompassing, an ombudsman, uh, ombudsman uh, with the Department of Defense. His analytical skills were honored by all of his experience and education for the investigation of his life, the United States government. My personal relationship with the author has spanned two decades, and he never stops amazing me with the information he uncovers. Get comfortable and hold on to your hat. J. Randolph Appleby, municipal judge, retired Newark, New Jersey. So we got a, a forward by a municipal judge. Huh. Let's see what this book is talking about. Let's look at the introduction. It says, several months prior to the writing of this book, I began questioning my motivation for doing so. I had a comfortable lifestyle with no real bone to pick with anyone, especially the government. I had achieved a comfortable financial position, well-educated, firmly established in the legal profession, and most importantly of all, I had a loving, caring family. What then motivated me to take on both the state and federal governments, the proverbial biggest bullies on the block? The answer is that I had discovered that both the state and federal governments have been lying to and stealing from we the people. Of all criminals, the ones that are personally repugnant to me are liars and thieves. This species of criminal I cannot abide in any manner, from any source, especially the government. Ergo, the years of research from any... uh, Ergo, the years of research and covering the story you are about to read. The government and the international global elite have systematically stolen our wealth and our birthright as Americans. The title of this book, Fruit from a Poisonous Tree, explains the theft of our wealth and identity, and the book tells what we can do about it. This story is not about high drama, but it has that. It is not a story about insatiable greed. It has that also. This story is about the planned, deliberate destruction of the United States of America by the arch enemies of this nation who have been around since its inception, the global elite whose identity you will, you will discover. During my investigation, I became so overwhelmed by the government's deceit and unabashed arrogance that I went back to the history books trying to identify the point at which our republic swerved on to the destructive path towards democracy where our creation, the government, servant of the people, became the master and we became the servant. Whether non-productive, who are consumers of the public treasury, elect politicians who promise them even more government benefits at the expense of the majority of productive, well-producing Americans. That is the democracy we live in today and our founding father's worst nightmare. And this is what I've been saying also. All the Democrats, they don't seem to get about it. They get it. They talk about Herschel Walker. I mean, just look at this Herschel Walker and Ralph Warlock uh, race that we just had to endure. You know, this guy, they, you know, they going off on Herschel Walker. He's not the most, uh, you know, uh, articulate gentleman uh, to take on, uh, uh, to enter into politics. But it's not about that. It's about the political platforms and what, um, what they uh, stand for, you know, The uh, Democratic Party is a socialist communist party. And I'm not saying that as some some conspiracy theorist. I'm saying that because I understand what communism is. And I understand what dependent communism is nothing but dependency on government. And what is the uh, what is the Democratic Party trying to get all of you to do? Depend on the government. Open your eyes. I was not a Republican. I'm not some elitist. I'm not in a position, oh, use of making money. Now you're a Republican. That ain't, that ain't none of that. It's, it's not any of that. It's not none. I mean, I try to have conversations with my family members. And, you know, if I just bring up Donald Trump, they just get mad. And I say, you know, I say, well, why are you mad at Trump? They don't even have a good reason. They don't even have a good reason, man. They just, everybody's emotional. Everybody is steeped in hatred. 
Nobody's thinking. Nobody's asking intelligent questions. Nobody's educated about anything. Everybody's just mad about something. But it goes on, it says, this change from a Republican form of government to our present democracy was silent and insidious. There are many contributors to this metamorphosis whom we might fault, both inside and outside of government, such as teachers, clergy, judges, and politicians, but laying blame would solve nothing. Oh, yes, it would. First of all, I want you to go and read the protocols of the learned elders of Zion and look at what these people said. They said they were going to put agents in the schools and the clergy, the judges and the politicians. They're going to have people everywhere. And that's what you're seeing today. Now that they got everybody in place, you can see this steady encroachment. First of all, they program in your minds. They're using Hollywood to no end. The woman king. What kind of damn insult? Uh, that is that to be the biggest insult to a man that they could possibly do. And right now, social media, you can't even say anything to these people. They can call you anything under the sun. And if you return back, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna cancel you out. Pay attention to what's going on, y'all. And you got to start, and y'all got to get out of this, this, especially you men out here. You know, a lot of men are turning a lot of punks. You know, you got people standing up for you. Y'all sit back silently, just watch people like with Ky, what's going on with Kyrie Irving and Kanye West. And then you have the nerve, the audacity to criticize them. You will never see those people do that to their own. They don't give a fuck how bad they are. You'll never see a Jew criticize another Jew. What the fuck is wrong with you? Let me go on. Ultimately, we the people are to blame. We are responsible. We are permitted both state and federal governments to have control over our children's education, which has resulted in the dumbing down of generations so that most of us cannot detect the slow perversion of our freedom. Charlotte Isserbite, she's a government whistleblower. What's wrong? I don't understand what's wrong with people. They don't want to, This lady's name is Charlotte It's her bike. Y'all need to listen to this lady. Listen to this lady. Charter school Trojan horse. Right here, Charlotte is a bike. Education giant. She's a whistleblower. I mean, very interesting conversation. She was worked for the Department of Education. She was in the highest uh, in the highest position. She's telling all of y'all crazy ass people that it's intentional. They dumbing down your children. Look at the rap music. Rap music, dumb as fuck. All right, I'm talking about it. Yeah, I'm talking, your children don't know it because they're growing up in it. They can't smell the shit because they've been smelling it all their life. They can't see that it's been a steady decline in intelligence. It's ignorant-ass music that they put and they foist it on your children. Most of them can't read, don't know how to do cursive writing, anything, don't know how to put a sentence at the end, of, don't know how to put a period at the end of a sentence or capitalize. Uh, look at all the people don't know how to fucking capitalize at the beginning of a sentence. Y'all just walking around just acting like the shit is normal. Like, I can't do nothing about it. Shit, what you want me to do? Let me go on back. Where was that? Oh, yeah, let me, you know, that's the, that is the, uh, in case you were wondering, that was the, uh, seminar that's going to be on the 13th and 14th of january there's a link in the description if y'all want to register for we're doing early registration right now <coughs> it's going to be on a saturday and sunday at the crown plaza hotel in houston texas all the all of the particulars are on the web don't call me ask me for anything it's right there on the registration page let's continue it says, Thomas Jefferson, uh, Thomas Jefferson cautioned us that freedom is not free. The price you must pay for freedom is eternal vigilance. He also said, those who hope to be both ignorant and free are hoping for something that never has been and never will be. As a people, we have for many years been apathetic to the Congress, the president and the judiciary, so much so that we never noticed the subtle diminishing changes that were occurring to our freedom right in plain sight. We have not been vigilant. 
Somewhere along the way, this plan for a republic went dreadfully wrong. Without any constitutional authority, the republic was transfer, uh, transformed into a democracy. And that's all they say. Uh, this is a threat to our democracy. And they talk, they got all y'all program think democracy means freedom. That's what y'all, y'all hear that word democracy, y'all automatically associate freedom with that shit in your mind. Please share this with your little democratic friends, your little democratic homeboys and homegirls and everything that talk about Trump and think they so intelligent with their arguments that aren't, don't have no basis in any type of civics whatsoever. Let's keep going. Now, the president makes law by executive order, again, without constitutional authority. Executive orders is not law, though. But I understand what he's trying to say, the way the, the, way the government has so much control over everything, it might as well be. The Congress is powerless because of fierce partisanship and a constant pursuit of money from the international corporations needed to perpetuate their political lives. I don't agree with that. Congress is very powerful. The result is that they do nothing to check and balance the other runaway branches of our government. The agencies that were created by Congress to make and enforce regulations and administer the draconian laws of the Congress and the executive branch now answer only to the diseased, corrupted body of the executive branch, which answers to no one but the international cartel of bankers, philanthropists, and senior-level policy uh, uh, wonks. The incomprehensible, uh, the incomprehensible laws of Congress, especially the taxing statutes, are patently unconstitutional in their application to the citizens of the 50 states. But this seizure of the productive people's wealth for the benefit of the non-producing minority and the imprisonment of those who resist this theft has been ratified by a corrupted federal judiciary and Supreme Court. I'm going to see if he really understands this. I'm going to see if he really understands this. That briefly sums up our present day democracy in the state of the union. Where did it all go wrong? You're about to find out and you are not going to like it one bit. I truly believe that many of the problems we have with government and the judiciary today stem from the deliberate bastardization of the English language by those in government. The laws of English grammar are totally inflexible. It is absolutely impossible for any English speaking nation that prides itself on the assertion that it is a nation of law and not of men without adhering to a strict discipline in the use of the English language and grammar to be anything other than a nation of men without law. Proper English is essential to the drafting of those national laws. Otherwise, tyranny will always be the end result. The Supreme Court has pontificated that the Constitution is a living, breathing document. Some of them have. You got, you got, you know, some who say that you got, you got originalists. I think now that um, uh, uh, Scalia has died, I think he may have been. And you know, you got uh, Clarence Thomas. They all original originalists. Might be, but I think the majority now are the ones who you know try to preach that the Constitution changes with the time. Okay, and they uh, uh, that they, the majestic body of legal and intellectuals in the process of an ever evolving society, must interpret the organic constitution for us, the ignorant masses. Preposterous. The constitution is written in plain English so that anyone with a fifth grade education can understand its simple meaning. It isn't written in Russian or Chinese and doesn't need interpretation. Does the Constitution get cold or hot, sick or diseased? Does it get old and senile? The Constitution is not a living, breathing document. It's a dead tree, a dead tree that was processed into paper so that the eternal ideas and heavenly concepts of men governing themselves could be preserved for future generations. And that's key right there. You have to understand that you are sovereigns. And if you are a politician, an attorney, or any type of stupid motherfucker that's out there listening that uses the word sovereign citizen, I'm sitting here telling you to your face that you are a traitor to this country. And and at the at the rate that you're going, you are headed for the firing squad. I don't really understand how people can really think that you're going to get away with this, that people aren't going to, you know, the creator of the boundless universe sends people like me. You think I'm going to be the only one? He blessed us with insight and intelligence and comprehension. You think 
that geniuses are only within your ranks? You got to be the biggest damn fool walking the planet if you believe that. The people are going to get sent messengers. It has always been like that. The vision and concepts immortalized in the Constitution cannot evolve with our, uh, with our society because men, by the very nature of being man, rarely uh, rises to the higher level. Uh, rarely rises to a higher level of nobility. We, as a species, usually evolve to a lower base of decadence, immorality, one notch above a slug. That's the nature of man, and it has been so since the Garden of Eden. The United States Constitution, this document that the learned justices say must evolve to keep up with our society, is why we were the only nation in the entire existence of the human race to ever promise life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness to all of its citizenry, and then deliver on that promise. Look around and determine for yourself if we are a moral society that must have an evolving constitution to keep up with us. Our government has taken from us our common law and the protections it afforded us and replaced common law with government-made vulgar law called statutory law that strips us from our freedom by creating legal fictions and compelling performance for those legal fictions which common law did not. And let me say this, it's absolutely true. But that's our fault once again. You got attorneys out there, they're so ignorant and blind, they think statutes are the law. You tell me, you know, they come on my, they, they, you know, I got to show you some of these comments. Oh, I just came over here to thumbs down this ridiculousness. How can you be so, do so much research and be so ignorant? How, I must be doing something right because I got your ass over here commenting. I got you upset. What pulled you out the chair? I only got 40,000 subscribers. Why are you over here? Why are you over and why, why are you marshalling up enough energy to even comment on any of my videos if it's all ridiculousness if it's ridiculousness you have nothing to worry about because you know it's not i'm coming for your ass and ain't nothing that you can say post none of that shit that's gonna stop me it ain't, ain't none of that shit stopping me ain't you figured that out yet i've been rolling seven years strong i told him that in the courtroom Y'all not stopping me. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing, you, ain't nothing. If God is with you, who can be against you? You ain't nothing. I'm going to steamroll y'all ass. You is nothing. It goes on. As a nation, we have more citizens in prison than any other country in the world, over 2 million. And 90% of the crimes of which they are accused are victimless crimes. That is absolutely 100% correct. Drugs are a victimless crime. How can you put somebody in prison for 30 years and there is no victim? I want you to think what the fuck is going on. Let me tell you something, man. I was in, I was in, a, I was in, 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 you know, when I was getting out of federal prison, you know, we had to go through this, uh, this, this you know, they're trying to introduce you back to the street. And they, and they sitting there talking about drugs, you know, and then they gave us some statistics. They said, you know, that um, 500,000 people a year die from alcohol. 80,000 people a year die from drugs. I mean, uh, uh, no, from, uh, from, no, I'm sorry. 500,000 people a year die from cigarette smoke. 80,000 people a year die from alcohol and 3,000 people a year die from drugs. So I raised my hand. I said, excuse me. Um, isn't life the most important thing? If you have cigarettes killing 500,000 people, why in the fuck are you concentrated so much on drugs? And she gave me some bullshit answer talking about drugs destroy families and, you know, because they're stealing from your family and breaking in homes and it causes other crimes and shit. I said, yeah, but these people are dying. This, this, they reason and rationale now. Now, they will have you believe that money ain't, it is not behind all of this. I know that's a damn lie. All right, they locking up. The reason that they concentrating on drugs, y'all, is because they get to sell them to you. They selling you the drugs. They letting them in the country. They making money off that. They black ops and all of that. They get to arrest you for it and make money off of that. 
They get the disenfranchised, you know, put you, put you in slavery. Then they get you in jail and they have you working for Unicor. They make money off of that. It's a big money making scheme. Then they invest in the stock market on it and trade your ass and make money off of that. But they want you to believe it's about the welfare of the country. You got to be the dumbest motherfucker on planet Earth if you believe that. I'm sitting there telling you right now. If you believe that shit, okay, you see. <laughs> Let me go on. Let's, let's, let's continue. I said that I was not going to be hood today and I keep descending more. It just seems like this is what I'm supposed to do because when you try to talk, y'all have a lot of people out there who articulate and talk very intelligent to you and the message just don't get through. You got to cuss a motherfucker out. Okay. You got to shock somebody into reality because these motherfuckers ain't finna listen to you. And if you try to, you know, just articulate something to them with reason, you know, just appeal to their intelligence and reason. <laughs> Let's keep going. As a nation, we have more citizens in prison than any other country in the world, over 2 million, and 90% of the crimes of which they are accused are victimless crimes. The law they violated most likely was paid for by corporations to protect them from us. We, we, however, are the problem because we operate like the tool of the new king and we do his bidding without questioning whether the law is a good law or a bad one. It is our, and, I, and that's what I said, you know, it's like, man, what is the man out here doing? You know, y'all let, y'all see, let me tell you something. I believe that our government is full of punks, gays, Ain't no men up there. Look at these laws they passing. This, these are not men. How y'all let these, 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 these kooks and freaks and all these people up in there and you ain't checking them on that. You think because they wearing a suit and they an attorney, they, you know, they, oh, these some good people. Look at the laws they pass. They ain't even reading the half of this shit that they pass. And you know that? They not reading it. They just trying to get some money. Y'all need to go listen to my girl, Cynthia McKinney. She's a sister. She had another whistleblower. Y'all ain't going to listen to the whistleblowers, though. Y'all ain't going to listen to people that was up there trying to tell you what's happening. We, however, are the problem because we operate like the tool of the new king, and we do his bidding without questioning whether the law is a good law or a bad one. It is our responsibility as jurors to ask those questions. That's why we have jury nullification. They don't want you to know about that. Why y'all ain't spreading that to everybody? If you're a juror and you don't know about jury nullification, you are derelict in your duty as a sovereign, as a citizen with a capital C prior to the 14th Amendment of our constitutional republic. This is a free motherfucking country, all right? These are public servants. We don't, they serve us, motherfucker. We don't serve them. You better start reminding these motherfuckers who they are. Take they job, sit they ass on the couch. The, that go for the police officers, the sheriffs, the mayors, the senators, everybody. They, those are nine to five jobs. They have to do a job for us. If they not doing a job for us, take their job from them and sit their ass on the couch. Put them in the unemployment line. Make them reflect on their choices. Especially, I remember I had a sheriff deputy. This was in this was in um this was in Georgia. I was in uh I was in Ellenwood, Georgia, and I was helping somebody with a foreclosure. And we had a sheriff's affidavit in Georgia. They got a statutory code that they have to stop a foreclosure. If you bring an affidavit to the sheriff, they have to have a hearing on it. So I I showed the sheriff this. And and, and I'm going to tell you exactly what he said to me. Uh, First of all, I wrote the United States of America. I wrote United States with a small C. And, you know, you know how people, if you're familiar with it, how people write United States of America differently than they write United States with all cap with the, you know, with the uh, with the corporation. So he said, this is what this sheriff deputy told me. I want y'all to listen very closely because he told me this straight up. He said, that's how we used to do things. We don't operate like that anymore. We take our orders from wealthy, powerful people. And the way that you wrote constitution on that paper is not going to be acceptable. 
This is what the motherfucker told me. Let me tell you, he was so frank with me. And I, they was out there uh, a, a putting somebody out the house. I just, I, I didn't know what to do. I just, I rolled off. I said, you know what? I, I just, I, 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 I mean, I, I, had a, I, I thanked him for his transparency. And, you know, you know, I, you know it, it hit me so hard, the truth of what he was saying, because I knew it was true. You're like, man, you're wasting your motherfucking time, man. That, they don't, the country don't operate like that no more. The country don't, he told me this. This is a sheriff's deputy, not a police officer, a sheriff's deputy. He said, we don't operate like that no more, man. We take our orders from wealthy, powerful people. They the law. And, and don't just talk about Georgia because that's saying, see, let me tell you something. When you, when you see them t- say something in one state, best believe it's going on in your state too. That's why I'm telling you that. It ain't just in Georgia. This is your funky state too. It's in New York. It's in Florida. It's, I didn't been all over the country. I didn't been in courtrooms all over the country. I didn't help people all over the country. I've been doing this 15 years. I didn't traveled. I didn't been in courtrooms in California. I didn't been in courtrooms down in Louisiana. I didn't been in courtrooms down in Florida. I didn't been in courtrooms down in North Carolina and South Carolina. I've been in courtrooms in Georgia and Tennessee. I've been in courtrooms all over this motherfucker. And let me tell you something. They're doing the same shit everywhere do not sit here and think that your state is special oh we got harder laws than we got the rockefeller laws in detroit they got that that shit is going on everywhere man i'm in texas they don't fuck around they're trying to enslave everybody (laughs) they go everywhere don't think it's just georgia We have uh, the problem because we operate. Okay, where am I at? Where am I at? Okay, let me start over. We, however, are the problem because we operate like the tool of the new king, and we just we we and we do his bidding without questioning whether the law is a good law or a bad one. It is our responsibility as jurors to ask those questions, but we have uh, let the prosecutor and the judge tell us what the law means instead of using God's gift of intelligence to discern for ourselves. We are responsible for determining not only the facts, but, but also the law. You know how you know that you're responsible for determining the facts? Because if you have a jury trial, who's determining the facts? The jurors. It's called fact finding. They're called fact triers. And jury nullification also lets you determine what the law is. The power is ultimately in your hands. Now, let me tell you something. It really is a dog and pony show because they had to keep up that but to make you think that's what's going on. But under this statutory scheme, under this democracy, it's really just a dog and pony show. But you have to call them on that because that's how you expose their ass. Because you say, okay, well, this is how it's supposed to be. And then when you see them trying to do something different, well, nah, you know, you really can't do this. Why, motherfucker, I can't do this? Well, you know, uh, the law says, uh, you know, what law? The statute you're talking about? What makes me subject to this statute? Well, this is the law. You calling that a law. Not what that, we, the common law is the law. God's law is the law. That's the only capital L, L, uh, capital L law. Law is something that doesn't change. If you can change it, it's not a law. It's somebody's will. It goes on. We're responsible for determining not only the facts, but also the law. If that were not true, then we would still have legal slavery and be prosecuting people for helping slaves escape under the Fugitive Slave Act. That law was interpreted and upheld by the courts of the, t- of the time. Decent jurors who did not agree exercised their right of jury nullification. Now, just was talking about that. The most cherished right we as Americans possess. That's what I got mad about. Oh, boy. You know, uh, who we just I was just talking about. You know, who ran his car through the crowd. He brought up jury nullification. 
And you got, and I want y'all to go over to those videos and read the comment section. I want you to look in the comment section so you can make a proper assessment of how dumbed down American people are, how they are, how much of a lynch mob they are. They don't understand that when you deny rights and protections of one person, you deny rights and protections of all people. I don't care what he did. I don't care if he is guilty of murder. He still he still has due process of law. He still has constitutional protections that must be followed. I don't give a fuck about how you feel. When you deny constitutional protections from one person, you in danger of denying it from off. They can get away with it with one person. They'll get away from you. You don't know what type of situation you're going to be caught up in in the future. Karma has a very, very humorous way of teaching you a lesson. Oh, you don't think you, oh, you think that don't involve you. You get caught up in something you was completely innocent of and get drugged through this system. And it, it's going to be an eye opening experience. We now have replaced morality with abortion on demand. And if we do not kill our children in the womb, we tax them to death the moment they are born. And it's really interesting. And, you know, we live in a world today. These people talking about I got a right over my body. They talking about you can, you know, they passing laws that let me tell you women something. You you abortion, you, you, you know, right to my body advocate. The state ain't t- ain't nobody telling you you can't do nothing with your body. That's the biggest fucking lie that you are perpetuating. I ain't nobody telling you what to do with your body. What we're saying is the state is not going to be a party to murder. Or you can go, you can take your ass to another state and kill your baby. You can jump on a plane and go overseas. You got options. You are free. Okay. Nobody telling you what you can do. Is that as a public matter, not private? You can find somebody to do it privately if you need to, if that's what you really want to do. Nobody's telling you what to do with your body. What you mad about is you can't find a doctor, a licensed doctor in a state where the people have come together and said, we don't want you killing babies. And let me say something else about this. You don't think there's a karmic debt you got to pay when you kill a baby. You think you just killed the baby and it's all good, huh? You think that's the end of the matter. You think you think you when you get up off that table, that's the end of the matter. You think it's over. You think it's over. You think you have enough knowledge about the spiritual world where you can make a determination that at the moment of conception, that's not really a life. You, you have enough knowledge about the esoteric ramifications that exist in abject reality to make a conclusion that you can kill something and there will be no, no, there will be no penalty. That is, that is some of the most audacious, arrogant, ignorant I mean you gotta be a damn fool you gotta be you think that there's a cause this is why I do a natural law show for all you feminists out there and everything that was attacking me on Facebook talking about natural law don't exist and it changes I'm talking to you ignorant motherfuckers right now go get them put this link go over there in Facebook and put a link to this damn show over in that feminist organization and I'll set up a phone number and I let all you man, man want to be men. You can call into this damn show. Cause I ain't afraid of none of you hoes. You sitting there talking, Oh, you know, you, uh, you by yourself, you know, and everything. That's why you don't got nobody. And oh, shit, that don't matter. Man, man, let me tell you, I've been a player all my life. What you talking about? Is the, the, the last thing that I, the last thing that I have to deal with is being alone. I can be with a woman anytime I want to be. I got money, prestige, intelligence, looks. I got, I got the whole package. It's never been a problem for me. My concern is with my people. I see what's going on. Put a link over there. I know one of y'all on here looking right now. Go send your link over there. So I need I need the analytics. Y'all, y'all sent 10,000 of them to Facebook. Sent 10,000 of them. Over. I did a post. I said, I said, teaching women 
to be strong and independent is the passing on of a curse. Do you know I got 10,000 feminists who attacked me for that post? Because I said teaching women, you know, you are sitting here against nature. If you are teaching a woman to be strong and independent, you is a fucking demon. Okay, that's what I'm telling you right now. If you're a woman listening, I'm telling you a demon. Okay, because there's a masculine and feminine principle that is dispensed by nature. I don't give a fuck what you think about it or anything like that. That's what it is. And you men out there, you're allowing the stupidity to exist. They really, the feminists are right. Cause sometimes they, cause they, this is what the feminists saying about the men. Y'all are pussies. And so are the Zionists. They saying it. And it's true. Cause you motherfuckers are afraid to talk. Let me tell you something. I ain't never, that's why people don't like me. Cause I say what other people, I've got popular saying what other people want to say, not caring what you think. I speak the truth, though it be bitter to others. Let me say that again for you, for the people in the back, you speak the truth, though it be bitter to others. I don't give a fuck if you don't like how I said it, fuck your feelings. I don't give a fuck what you feel about it. I it's the truth. If you cannot embrace the truth, there's nothing wrong with me. It's something wrong with your ass. All right. You the one need to sit on the couch and get some sort of therapy. I don't feel like that. Man, fuck your feelings. Men don't listen. We operate. Through our feelings are channeled through our reason and intellect. We are not you. Now stop trying. I saw a chick make a video talking about what's wrong with men because they don't get in touch with their feelings. Trying to turn us into bitches. <laughs> now you got some niggas rolling with that shit. All right. What that what they are trying to do is they're trying to cut your nuts off, nigga. All right, you know, and play dice with that shit. Do you understand that? Let me get off the feminists right now because they, you know, they are a because they will start jumping on nigga. You know, I walk down the street, you know, a hundred of them will jump on me, start kicking my ass. Y'all motherfuckers just take pictures and shit. <laughs> Told you not to piss off them feminists, Yusuf. Now look at you. <laughs> Motherfucker make a YouTube video doing a review of it. <laughs> all right let's keep going let me get back to this let me get back you know it was a commercial we now have replaced morality with abortion on demand and if we do not kill our children in the womb we tax them to death the moment they are born does it not seem immoral to permit a congress to spend money that it does not have so that every future generation will be obligated to pay from their labor and the property for their entire life on a debt that is a 60 or 80 years old. Let me stop right here. Let me stop right here, man. Sometimes you ought to just go over here and just look at this shit. You ought to periodically go so you can understand something, $31 trillion. These people are putting, the only way that you're going to get rid of that is discharge it. This is why I do what I do. People can say whatever the fuck they want to say about me. Ain't no basis for this and everything, but the only way you are going to get rid of that, you're going to have to discharge it. You will not pay that debt. Your other succeeding generations are depending on you right now in this moment in time. What we do right now will define what our future generations will have to endure. Debt is slavery. Do you understand that? You is enslaved if you are a U.S. citizen. This is the U.S. national debt. That is the debt of the corporation. It cannot be the debt of the republic because this is goddamn Federal Reserve notes. It can't be, it can't be in the Republic. This is some bullshit. This is monopoly. This is a fucking monopoly game. Don't you understand that? Learn how to build, make negotiable instruments. You understand that? This is a fiction. This is bullshit. 
What are they loaning you? They're not loaning you nothing, man. Don't you understand that? You go to the bank and get a loan for a mortgage. Where the money at? Next time you go buy something, ask them. Ask them. I be in the finance manager. I play the game with them. I go in there. I say, yeah, man. Hey, say, man, let me ask you a question, man. Where's this money coming from that you're about to loan me for this car? You say you loan to me $120,000 for this car. Where's this money? Y'all know I, I do big numbers. You know what I'm saying? You should be doing big numbers too. You know, I don't know why y'all fucking around with twenty and fifteen thousand dollar cars. You got one life to live. Get what the fuck you want while you're here. Nobody's telling you not to enjoy life. Okay? Enjoy it. However, don't be stupid. <laughs> where are they where are you getting this money, man? Where's it coming from? Oh, it's coming out of other people. No, it's against the law, nigga. Try again. All right. Uh, what, and this is when you're going to get them when they, because they're going to come out. It's going to fly out their mouth and come out of other people's accounts. Just hit them with the, that's against the law. And they, oh, they start stumbling in because they just make it up shit. Because they don't really want to have a discussion with you about it. You can read the goddamn contract and see where the money's coming from. They're going to monetize it. All right. They're going to collateralize it. What's collateralizing the obligation is the car. Okay. They're going to put it, they're going to pool it with other people with a similar credit score and let investors invest on it because you're going to make payments. Those payments are going over a wall on, on one side of a wall. There are people paying on the other side of a wall. There are people receiving. Which basically all it amounts to the fact that it's your labor. It's your labor. It's your labor. Use a goddamn slave, okay? There's no other way to describe it. I've looked at it a hundred different ways, and it always ends up with the same conclusion. It's slavery, motherfucker. Now, they will attempt to basically sanitize it by calling you an employee or a taxpayer or an inmate or some other shit like that. But at the end of the day, that's what it is, slavery, and when you get a Black's Law Dictionary and look up the word slavery, you will see that slavery was never eliminated by the 13th Amendment. The 13th Amendment didn't eliminate slavery. It protected it. It says that it protected slavery. It just moved it to the prison system. And they also made it against the law to use the word slave. So they had to come up with different synonyms to describe your condition. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let me read this again because I just like this, this paragraph for some reason. We now have replaced morality with abortion on demand. And if we do not kill our children in the womb, we tax them to death the moment they are born. Does it not seem immoral to permit a Congress to spend money that it does not have so that every future generation will be obligated to pay from their labor and property for their entire life on a debt that is 60 or 80 years old? The moment your child is born, she has a debt to the Federal Reserve Bank incorporated of $22,000 in rising. That's why they want to give your children. No, no, they don't. They only get that debt when you give your child a Social Security number. That's the new deal. That's the contract. Take the, they take this social security number, be a surety for the national debt. Please be our slave and we will give you benefits and privileges. We will give you social security when you die. We will promise you three thirty five an hour. What, what is minimum wage now? I don't know what minimum, minimum wage. When I, last time I was working, it was three thirty five an hour. So that just goes to show you how long ago I was working. Y'all remember when, when minimum wage was three thirty five? We used to all walk around talking about three. Nigga, you make three thirty five an hour. Now it's like what is what, what thirteen dollars an hour or something like that? It's some you know some number. I just like I'm just totally out of tune with. I'm like damn man, thirteen dollars an hour in the eighties, boy, you was balling. Now that's minimum wage. <laughs> y'all remember that? The moment your child is born, she has a debt to the Federal Reserve Bank incorporated of $22,000 and rising. Okay, let's see if that's it. That ain't it. What does it say right here? Yeah, per taxpayer. Two hundred. Look at this right here over here in this corner right here. 
All right, that's what you look at. What does it say right here? It says, you got a U.S. national debt, 31 trillion, 421 billion, 369 million, 700, well, you know, whatever, right there, $900,000. Debt per citizen, $94,210. That's what, you know, that's my, that's what I think that if we can get this message out to everybody and send in to the federal government a bond for $94,210, every citizen in the country do it, I think we'll get rid of the national debt. What you think? What the fuck they going to say? What are they going to say? We can't take this. What the fuck you mean you can't take this? What, 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 what we need Federal Reserve notes? And then that opens up a whole new, bur- that, that opens up a whole bunch of worms because we can go to the Chicago Board's Federal Reserve pamphlet where it talks about Federal Reserve notes are worthless pieces of paper since all you people out there like talk about what's worthless. Federal Reserve notes is worthless pieces of paper. They only got value because people think they have value. So they will accept them. So, if, 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 if I can give you that worthless piece of paper, why can't I give you another worthless piece of paper? That's why the affidavit of Walker Todd was so important. That man right there, he tr- betrayed all of them. I'm surprised he's still walking around alive. Only reason he is because he knows that most of these people out there, they don't read that shit. And then if they do, they ain't going to understand it. Then another, and they ain't going to act on it. And then a lot of guys just ain't going to care. No, you don't need to do all that. Somebody said you need to create your TDA, Treasury Direct account. You don't need no Treasury Direct account. Ain't no fucking money. You need to give these people a bond. That's what a secure part. Y'all made up this Treasury Direct account. That's why they they walking around talking about y'all believe that there's a secret account. See, you don't follow what's going on. All that information that gets put out is get put out to make you look crazy because you don't have no access to what's going on behind the scenes. You got to know what that is. I might just drop a package off to me. Let me see what it is. I know my neighbors be like, man, this nigga, who is this this nigga over here? Boy, he loud on a motherfucker. What they're talking about. What is this I bought? Oh, y'all get to see it. Hold on. I almost forgot. I just got this in the mail. What y'all think? We fly? He motherfucker fly right here, man. I'm just, these is fly. These gonna be my new. They just came in. They just came in. These gonna be my new go tos. You know, I like the side of them. They're dope. A little, little different look. Prescription. All of my glasses are prescription. I'm blind as a bat. I have to have progressive lenses. That's why they had to send them to me. What y'all think about these? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Yeah. Feedback, feedback. Nice look, nice look. Professional. Dope. All right, okay. All right. I thought they was fly as hell when I saw that. Man, I got to get these, you know. And I was like, all right, all right. The sides of them was just killing. I said, okay. All right, I like them too. All right, so this is my, my new kind of like fly nerd look. My Kevin Samuels 2.0. <laughs> Like these right here, these tight though. Yeah, yeah, man. I can I can roll with these. I can roll with these. They just see y'all the first people to see me in them. 
I bought them in Atlanta. It was when I was in Atlanta, and they had to put the lenses in them. So, you know, I'm in Dallas. They had to ship them to me. They just came to the door. So, you know, I opened up. Threw them on, you know. Yes. <laughs> Y'all be checking out my frame game. My frame game is top notch, man. I be having these, be, you know, these right here, chrome hearts right here. I know some of y'all probably thought they was uh, it's chrome hearts. Chrome hearts are better than the uh, what's the other one? Oh my god, but these chrome hearts they 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 constructed very very nice, professional. These are nice ones. Fly nerd look. <laughs> yeah, I like these. I like these. All right, wait a minute. Let's get back. I got distracted talking all this mess. All right. So I want to get back. So if we can get rid of the national debt, I just think we can get rid of that. Let me get back to this and look at this real quick. I think, don't y'all think we can get rid of that? I think you learned how to put together a negotiable instrument. You can make it happen. Somebody talking about my Iron Maiden shirt. I like, you know, I wasn't never really a fan of Iron Maiden. I just like the shirt. And I thought I thought it was a cool ass name. You know, they had a cool fucking name, Iron Maiden. <laughs> That was a fly fucking name for a rock group. Anyway, but I did like some rock, you know, you know, I'm from the, uh, the M MTV era. So, you know, MTV introduced a lot of us to white music, rock music, and things like that. Like one of my favorite rock artists, if you must know is, um, uh, Billy Idol, Def Leppard, Van Halen. Um, I listen to all music, by the way. I listen to everything. Uh, I like Guns N' Roses, too. Uh, I really like Guns N' Roses. Uh, a couple of them. I can't think of them right now, but it was it was a lot of good ones. But Billy Idol, well, he was bad as hell. It was, that was my, he one of my favorites. But anyway, let's keep going. So we're looking at this right here. Debt per citizen, $94,210. Debt per taxpayer, two hundred forty-eight thousand five hundred eighty-two. I don't even know what that is, but what I usually do, I just I send them a negotiable instrument for either one. This is my portion of the national debt, ninety-four thousand two hundred ten dollars, and here's my other portion for the debt per my taxpayer. I don't. What's the debt difference between a citizen and a taxpayer? I'm not really sure. Might have to ask that question. Look at the interest down there, nineteen sixty. The 552.12% federal debt. To, oh, that's to the gross uh, the domestic uh, product ratio. Okay, down there at the bottom. Okay. Y'all need to look at this, though. Think. Modern day slavery. It is not only immoral, it is the thing of which violent revolutions are made. If we do not stop this insanity here and now, our grandchildren will, and it will not be pleasant. Waco, Texas is the example of what the new king wanted us to see, because that is our future if we do not comply with the king's demands. We permitted our government to negotiate and pass the NAFTA and GATT treaties, which guaranteed that this nation will never again be an industrial or technological world power, assuring that our people are doomed to a third world agrarian life within the next 50 years. I like what Andrew Tate said. He said, America, he said, America's failed. He says a failed is failed. Look at the morality. Look what's happening. It's failed, man. It's by, it, I really believe it's about time to start leaving the United States of America and see and go somewhere else. I don't know where we can run to because I think it's going to be all over the planet. But I do think that there are places that are like, you know, you know, back in the, like how the the fifties and sixties was in this country. There are countries you can go to like that, but. They are trying trying to do take the whole planet over, and I think the United States of America. What you're seeing is going on here. It's a lost cause, but it goes on. As I write this introduction, my book is finished and I have reviewed its contents. Because of my knowledge of government corruption, I'm becoming incensed. While um, incensed while organizing my thoughts for this introduction, my antagonism was so great while I was researching that I expatriated my citizenship from the corporate United States. That expatriation document is in the first chapter of this book and sets the tempo for the remainder. I hope 
that if nothing else, you will come away from this reading experience, uh, a, a reading experience, a wiser and more determined citizen of your state with a passion for recovering what was ours and what was stolen from us. Melvin Stamper, Juris Doctorate, Sui Juris. Sui Juris means by one's own right. S-U-I-J-U-R-I-S. You can sign your name like that. It means by one's own right. All right, so here's the exp- and This is the reason I was doing this. Because of this document, I want y'all to study this. Uh, it was talked about a little bit in um, um, One Man Out and some other documents talk about expatriation. The problem a lot of people have with expatriation is making the government understand the difference between the republic and the corporate democracy. Because they try to play ignorant like, oh, you're expatriating from the United States of America. No, I'm expatriating from the corporate United States that's within the 10 mile square of Washington, D.C., the same game they play with your UCC ones. You're talking about, you know, you can't, uh, you can't file a UCC one against yourself. Bitch, you know I'm not filing this against myself. This all caps name is a corporation. Trying to play dumb. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's keep going. Let's look at this expatriation. Let's see if it's interesting. How's this right? How's this real quick? This is pretty good. Y'all like what, what we talking about today? I kind of like this kind of like study, you know, like y'all get to read along with me when I do my study. I said, I say, you know what? We ought to just start broadcasting when I read something, you know, and just talk about it while I'm reading it with the people. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, just have a conversation, you know, go along with it, read it. Talk about this shit. Just let my mind, you know, just kind of like this, you know, like, yeah, all right, let's do this. You know what I'm saying? Let's get back into it. Oh, wait a minute. Where the likes at? Where the likes at? Because I might have to stop. I might have to stop if the likes ain't where they supposed to be. If the likes are not where they supposed to be. I might have to stop. Wait a minute. Let me see where we at. Where is the likes at? Where is the likes at? Where are the likes? Where are the likes? Can we get 300 likes? Can we get 300? It's 246 likes. Can we get 300? Can we get 300 likes before I continue? Can we get 300? Can we get 300? 260? 263? Can we get 300? Can we get 300? 271? What's the Jeopardy music? 283. All right, 283. Okay, 17 more people. Find 17 people. Find 17 people. 283. Okay, there we go. 302. All right, let's go. Let's keep, let's continue. Citizenship expatriation. Not like. All right. <clears throat> Let's see this poem and everything. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame, with conquering limbs astride from land to land, here at our sea washed sunset gate shall stand a mighty woman with a torch whose flame is the imprisoned lightning and her name mother of exiles. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor that twin cities frame. Keep ancient lands, your storied pomp, cries she. With silent lips, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. By Emma Lazarus, New York in 1883. I don't, I don't think I read that very eloquently, but I think you get the point. Anyway. 
citizenship in modern America. Let's leave with this man. Let's see if he knows anything. In 1798, Thomas Jefferson instructed that Congress has not unlimited power to provide for the general welfare, but only those specifically enumerated. Wilson Nicholas, a delegate to the Virginia Convention that ratified the Constitution, said, Congress has power to define and punish for counterfeiting and felonies committed on the high seas and offenses against the laws of nation, but they cannot define or prescribe the punishment for other crimes whatsoever without violating the Constitution. Chief Justice Marshall said the police power unquestionably remains and ought to remain with the states. Until this past century, federal courts upheld the view that the federal government could deal only with crimes specifically mentioned in the Constitution. In 1911, the Supreme Court said among the powers of the state not surrendered, which powers therefore remain with the state is the power to so regulate the relative rights and duties of all within its jurisdiction as to guard the public morals, the public safety and the public health, as well as to promote the public convenience and the common good at the founding of the Republic. There were only four federal crimes, treason, counterfeiting piracy and crimes against the law of nations. Now there are three thousand federal crimes, 300,000 federal administrative regulations, many of which are punishable as crimes, and about 85,000 local governments with 513,000 elected officials or one in every 500 people. We have an estimated 45 million laws, state, federal, and local. God, the creator of the universe, gave us only 10 laws with actually 613. God, the creator of the universe, gave us only 10 laws with which to live our lives. And although I fail often, I try to conduct my life by those 10 commandments. It would be impossible, however, to obey 45 million laws. And and that's because these people are godless. They don't believe in God. I'm trying to tell y'all, man, they doing everything they can. You witnessing it in real time. Y'all people claim y'all don't believe in the Bible, don't believe in religion. You know, religion is outdated, outmoded. But I'm looking at it, and, I, and I'm not a religious person, but I can see very clearly this is spiritual warfare. This is some type of spiritual warfare. It, what I, You know what I think about the Quran and the Bible? I think that those are good books. I just don't think they have been interpreted properly. That's what I, they haven't been translated properly. They haven't been interpreted properly. That's my 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 uh my gripe with them. Not that it's the white man's book. Every federal program takes on a life of its own, so it will be extremely difficult to transfer power from the federal government to the states. It is difficult to change, much less kill or transfer a federal program once it has been established, even after it has outlived its usefulness. The New Deal view of an all-powerful central government must be replaced with a firm separation of powers if this republic is to survive. And there he gave you some insight into the New Deal. Central, it was, let me tell you something. Franklin Delano Roosevelt had 72 Jews, appointed Jews in his administration. Do y'all know that? They took down the website that had all the information on it. I had, it was a website that was devoted to and it showing that gave the names of everybody. Just like today, you're seeing that. This is communism. Y'all not seeing it. I'm not being racist. I'm not doing anything. Open your eyes. Because what I'm talking about, you can see. Put on your glasses. Put on your glasses. Y'all go watch They Live with Rodney Rodney Piper. That fight, that fight that he had with the black, 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 black man in the alley. When I first saw that, I said, they, they, they talking about us. How hard it is to get us to put on glasses just to see. And it's right there in front of your face. And people can still tell, call you a conspiracy theorist. When all you got to do is just pull up these people's names and see, damn, he's Jewish. He's Jewish. He's Jewish. 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 All of them seem to also be promoting the vaccine. Okay. All of them. They uniform on that. Um, what else in the uniform? Oh, they, the council culture. Damn, they seem to own all the social media networks, Hollywood. Damn, why are they p- p- picturing us in Hollywood as punks and gays and shit like that? And, you know, and damn, you know, you just made the woman king. How the fuck can a woman be a king? Would they do that shit in their community? I don't think so. I don't think the Jews would make a woman king over the Jews, would they? Uh, nah, you know, man, who started this feminism shit? You start asking questions. It's not hidden. It ain't hidden. It's just you lazy. You don't want to look. It's not hidden. 
Increasingly in the last hundred years, powerful corporate interests have deliberately subverted the intent of the founders by financing the appointment of judges who would enhance corporate and federal power and weaken the constitutional system of checks and balances. I don't completely agree with that. I'm going to give you my thoughts on that. Y'all keep trying to, okay, I'm going to put a camera on me. Keep trying to call the judges corrupt. And I, and I read a lot of case law, so I cannot completely agree with that. What has happened, because the, the Supreme Court was striking down a lot of stuff that was unconstitutional. They went back and found loopholes. The biggest loophole they found was the plenary power doctrine, of which is a result of separation of powers. When they came out into the Republic and got you to contract with them to come within their jurisdiction, this is now I'm hoping he addresses that because his citizenship is the big issue. Okay. The big C capital C citizen prior to the 14th amendment and the little C citizen after the 14th amendment. Now, if you are an avid student of English grammar and you don't think that that matters, which a lot of people do, I've heard some people say that's not significant use of that's because your dumb ass failed in high school in grammar and shit. You can barely spell your goddamn name. All right. That's why you believe that shit. What's the difference in a big C and a little C major difference in a proper noun and a common noun. It's the citizenship. These people do everything properly. But in order for it to work, they had to dumb everybody down. Increasingly in the last hundred years, powerful corporate interests have deliberately subverted the intent of the founders by financing the appointment of judges who would enhance corporate and federal power and weaken the constitutional system of checks and balances. It did get weakened because all the power is concentrated in one branch of government, and that's the Congress. While many today t- attack the New Deal as representing the demise of constitutional government in America, the assaults actually began in the late 1800s when federal courts led by the Supreme Court started chipping away at state sovereignty. This allowed the federal government to assume numerous duties and responsibilities that under the Constitution had been reserved to the states or the people. Recalcitrant Southern states did not turn to the Supreme Court to lead the Union before the Civil War, partly because the Constitution does not grant the federal courts the right to control state sovereignty. The Constitution did not create a judicial supremacy, and there is extensive evidence that the founders never granted the Supreme Court the power to rule over the president, Congress, or the states. Every July 4th, we honor the signing of the Declaration of Independence by signing that document. The fa- Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Every July 4th, we honor the signing of the Declaration of Independence. By signing that document, the founding fathers, many of whom were deist. Okay, now I want you to understand that because y'all have heard me say this before. Many of the founding fathers were deists. Really, if you're a Mason, that's what you are. I don't know if you know it or not. You're a deist. And not to say it's a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Every July 4th, we honor the signing of the Declaration of Independence. By signing that document, the founding fathers, many of whom were deists, pledged their lives, fortunes, and sacred honor to the premise that all men are created equal, endowed by their creator with unalienable rights to be secured by a government that was subject to and inferior to the consent of the governed. The British pursued them as traitors to the king. Of the 56 original signers, nine did not live to see freedom. Five were in prison and 17 lost everything they had. Their sacrifice for the Constitution of the United States has guided this nation through a continuing effort to bring liberty and justice for all. Can any of us do less? Do y'all know that, that the the original signers of the Constitution, most of them were killed or all kind of stuff happened to them? They want to bring the United States of America back to a monarchy. That's what they want. They want a king of the world. They think they have a divine right of rulership, which in a sense they will if they understand natural laws and you don't. That's why I'm on here teaching natural laws. I'm trying to weaponize you against these people and give you the same tools that they have. The courage of America's founders was based on their belief in God's providence. George Washington called America's liberties the object of divine protection. James Madison, president and signer of the Constitution, affirmed their belief, saying, before any man can be considered as a member of civil society, he must be considered a subject of the governor of the universe. At the constant, and that's true, you got to know God's law, man. 
You got to put the camera on me. You got to know God's law, man. <laughs> you got to know God's law. That's your duty. What do you see what's going on? The reason that they are going to, that they're doing, creating this chaos with all this, this feminism and the, um, the, the transgender and the uh, 72 different forms of sex and all these different things that you see, this confusion, because this is heathen activity. They make you and you into heathens. And when you're a heathen, they have a right to rule over you. It's heathen activity. Go read. Um, let me go. Let's go read this real quick. Let's read it real quick. Let's read this real quick. A little Leviticus. Let's read. Let's read the Torah. I can't remember. It's 2545. Or 4525. Which was it? Yeah, that's it right here. All right, let's read this real quick. Let's read this. Read. Let's start at 38. Let's start at 30. This is Leviticus 25, verse 38. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan and to be your God. And if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxen poor and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant. They talking about their own. Now this is Jews talking about other Jews, but as a hired servant and as a sojourner, he shall be with thee and shall serve thee until the year of Jubilee river renewal. And then shall he depart from thee, both he and his children with him, and shall return to his own family, and unto the possessions of his father shall he return. For they are my servants, which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bondmen. Thou shalt not rule over him with rigor, but shall fear thy God. Both thy bondmen and the bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be the heathen that are round about you. Of them shall you buy bondmen and bondmaids. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall you buy, and of the families that are with you, which they beget in your land, and they shall be your possession. And you shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. But over your brethren, the children of Israel, you shall not rule over one another with rigor. Did that look like forever? Did that look like forever? Do that look like forever? They buying and selling you with the birth certificates and the soul. The birth certificate is evidence of a real living soul, and they give you a soul security number. It gets you to buy into their system. They created an alternate alternative system, and they gave you a Sam's Club card called a social security card so you can come in and shop in the club. You can bank in the club. You can buy things in the club. You can use the banking. You can use a uh, use a they money, they monopoly money in the club. But the money's only good in the club. At the Constitutional Convention, Benjamin Franklin began the tradition of prayers in Congress saying, in the beginning of the contest with Great Britain, when we were sensible of danger, we had daily prayer in this room of divine protection. A prayer, sir, we heard, were heard, and they were graciously answered. And that's why you read the Sirach chapter 2 where, where God says, show me a time I've never answered a prayer. I want you to think about that, marinate on that. Faith without works is dead. I have lived, sir, a long time, and the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth, that God governs in the affairs of men. And if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, is it probable that an empire can rise without his aid? If our liberty and nation are still under God's protection, none of us would be reading these books. That's why they're taking you away from God. They're taking you away from God's protection. They can only destroy the nation by taking you away from God. Look what they're doing. They're removing you from nature. Wake up. If God is with you, who can be against you?
If our liberty and nation were still under God's protection, none of us would be reading this book. We would be in full measure out in pursuit of our happiness. By rejecting God's plan for our future, we have chosen to adopt man's temporal plan, and we must suffer the consequences of that choice. I was just here in Dallas, Texas at the Anatole Hotel. Let me tell you something. There is a, there is a um, pharmaceutical company. I've never seen uh, the Anatole Hotel. If anybody knows about the Anatole in Dallas, um, that is the, um, what is the name of that family? They're the biggest real estate holding family in the world. Okay. Very w- wealthy people. And the Anatole was like a, a, a hotel when Michael Jackson came to the city. He would stay there. Beautiful hotel built in 1978. Today, still, even though it was built in the 70s, I still think it's still unmatched. The owner has um, all of his artwork. There's over $100 million worth of artwork in that hotel. If you ever come to Dallas, Texas, it would be a very good stop for you to go to the Anatole Hotel. The word Anatole is a Russian word from, that means sunrise. Sunrise. I, however, they had this pharmaceutical company in there. Man, these dudes have rented out almost every room in the fucking Anatole Hotel, man. They planning something, y'all. And they very secretive. They having high-end meetings up in this motherfucker. This is a pharmaceutical company. Right now, as I speak, they call Nuvu. Nuvu or some shit like that. Novu. That's the name of the company. Novu. Let me see if I put N O V O. N O U V E A U. Life Pharmaceuticals. Yeah, I think that's them right there. N O U V E A U. Novu Life Pharmaceuticals. That must be them. I don't know who they are. I don't know who they are. I was just in the Anatole just looking at all the artwork because I like to go over there and look at the artwork. Um, you know, Hilton is just managing it. I was trying to see who owned it. I forgot the owner's name, but they, y'all look up the owner of the Anatole. But they are the biggest real estate holding company in the world. I didn't know that. It was interesting. Let's keep going. Many years of legal research has led me down many paths in pursuit of truth. I didn't receive truth in law school or at any time during my formal education with the exception of a one room schoolhouse in Kentucky. That school didn't receive any federal funds for education. So the subject matter the teacher taught was not restricted. That's right. When you receive federal funding, you got to follow what they tell you to do. Remember public and private. You go to public school, public school means it's funded by government. You're going to do what they tell you to do. My aunt, she works with, uh, she's the vice regent of the colleges. And she told, she explained that to me. She said the federal government tells, uh, uh, decides what the curriculum in the schools is going to be based off the needs of the public. That's why you can't learn how to become a businessman or an entrepreneur or get rich going into public school. Public school is really a training ground for slaves. Like boot camp for slaves. (laughs) I hate to say that. Truth is truth. Speak the truth, though it be better to others. No, it's a hard pill to swallow. You got to swallow it. Now you need something to drink. Many years of legal research has led me down many paths in pursuit of truth. I didn't receive truth in law school or at any time during my formal education, with the exception of a one-room schoolhouse in Kentucky. That school didn't receive any federal funds for education, so the subject matter the teacher taught was not restricted. Our teacher had a remarkable understanding of the national and state constitution and the framers' intent, along with Thomas Jefferson's negotiations with the state legislature documented in the Kentucky Resolutions. 
fascinating reading then, visionary in the present day. I can't remember shit that I learned in social studies or anything in high school or nothing like that. It just wasn't nothing important. I remember they talked about the New Deal in our American history class, and it was only like one page long, and they made it seem like it was some good shit. I get out, I get out and read goddamn 100 pages and reading the federal. You know what? It should be in school that you need to read the uh, the uh, the floor discussions of your senators. People in high school should need need to understand that and read that. I can, if if I can see the dumbing down, we need to make our own schools, man. You should have a class devoted to credit. It should be just like fifth period should be credit. Where are you going right now? I'm, I'm going to you know, uh, you know, uh, introduction to uh, to business and personal credit. It's mandatory. It's not an elective. It's mandatory. I had to go in my fifth period class. It's interesting as fuck though. <laughs> And then, you know, you, you should have stuff like that. <laughs> Somebody, and this is true. I had my daughter ask her teacher why she needed to study Judaism because she's not Jewish. And the teacher said flat out because we teach you what we are told. She was solid. And that's true. Let me tell you something. That's another thing people are getting mad about. I'm looking at in uh, Phipps Plaza in uh, Georgia, and they're taking out the crosses, and they're putting uh, uh, Jewish menorahs and all of that in there. They 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 getting rid of Christianity. They letting you know who in control. Y'all tripping, man. Y'all tripping. You can't be this slow. You cannot be this slow. You can't be this slow, man. You, what are you doing? What are you doing? Smoking weed shit every day? Playing PlayStation? What are you doing? What are you doing? Why you don't know what I'm talking about? Ask yourself this question. Why are you looking at CNN every day and you don't understand what the fuck I'm talking about? Why you can't see? Why you think Candace Owens is a trip? Why you don't like her? What is she saying that offends you? She understands everything I'm talking about right now, by the way. That's why I like her. Why you can't say it? Let's get on. In later years, far removed from that one-room schoolhouse, what I received at public schools supported my federal grant money was revisionist history and omission of the truth in everything other than the sciences. After all, I had an education controlled by the federal government's money. I was taught that the federal and state government wanted me to learn nothing more and certainly not the truth. The old axiom that the truth is the first casualty of war is as close to any truth that you will ever find in your investigation of the federal government. That being the case, we have been lied to by our government and have been at war with our national government for a very long time. And I believe that this is the truth. As I write for each of us within this country, our liberty is perishing. That liberty crushed beneath the constant growth of state and federal government power. More than ever before, the federal, state, and local governments are confiscating citizens' property, trampling rights, and decimating opportunities for any prosperous future you may have hope for. Since 1933, a concentrated effort has been made to impoverish the people of America. Our wealth has been systematically stripped from us by rapacious taxation. Rapacious means greedy. You do know that you are sending all your money over to Israel, right? Where do you think the tax is going? Who do you think getting it? Why you don't know this? Why you don't, go listen to Rabbi Finkelstein. Go listen, man. Let me tell you something. Let me, let me put this out of here real quick. Let me put this out of here. Cause y'all think this is y'all think I'm y'all think this is funny. Somebody I noticed that y'all invited somebody over here and they think it's a joke. They think it's funny. I like these glasses, man. Like these, it was different. You know what I'm saying? But y'all think these, y'all think it's funny. Get over here. Let me look at something real quick. I want y'all go over to bit shoot. And then put in high frequency radio 
in the search bar just like that. And you're going to see me come up. All my videos, high frequency radio, you see them come up. And you need to look at, you need to go through all these videos. You just need to watch every fucking video on this page. I'm telling you the truth. You just need to stay. If you watch every video on this page, you will be where I'm at. But this is the one I want you to watch right here. This one right here, interview with Abraham, James Wickstrom, Abraham, uh, this, this interview with Rabbi Finkelstein. You need to, you need to watch, you need to listen to this video because they see it's just like the protocols of the learned elders of Zion. They will tell you that this is some conspiracy theorist bullshit that has been disproven. It hasn't. It's never been disproven. They they'll say that bullshit. Anybody they don't want you to read it because when you read it, you're like, well, damn, this is all the shit that's happening. What do you mean got disproved? Everything is happening. That's they talking about. Same thing with this. Everything this man is saying is happening. Exist. He was just bold in saying it because he said it's too late. We got control of everything. Ain't shit you can do no way. It was like that legendary interview, I think. I don't know if it was on Phil Donahue or what, but um, you know that, um, what is the CEO of uh, Procter & Gamble? I want y'all to look this up. Procter & Gamble. I don't know how many of y'all remember this. Y'all probably don't know, but it's my duty to educate people. I can't find it, but it was Procter and Gamble were alleged to be Satanists and you could look on all their stuff and you could see they put 666 like in this beard right here and on a lot of their different products um, and they make a lot of products and you can see Satanic Panic, Ivory Soap, all these different things. You go in and uh, they got exposed for it. I don't know how many of you know, but Procter and Gamble make a whole bunch of products y'all like Tide and all kind of stuff like that but they had all these symbols that were incorporated in almost all their products. And allegedly in an interview, the, uh, um, the head of Procter and Gamble said they all Satanists. And he said, there's nothing the Christian church can do about it because there are now reached a point where there are more Satanists than Christians. Let me put the camera on me. So I, y'all can say there are more Satanists than Christians. I see it's evident right now. You see what they doing. They don't give a fuck about your religion. They telling you in your face. They telling you in your face. Your religion is bullshit. They telling you that to your face. And this country was established on the Bible and Blackstone, William Blackstone commentaries coming out of England. They telling you that to your face, man. What time is it right now? Okay, I'm going to finish this later on because I'm going to have to get off now. It's noon. But I'm going to do a part two to this. We're going to come back and we're going to finish it. We're going to do a part two. And I'm, I'm going to set the uh, link up for the show. We're going to do it tonight. It's going to be tonight. I'm coming back tonight. And we're going to do part two to this. We're going to we're gonna start. We're going to continue where our law left off at. As I was saying, the Satanist one wearing an Iron Man shirt. <laughs> yeah, it is hypocritical, ain't it? I just kind of like the shirt. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I like I like the shirt. You know what I'm saying? It's my, it's my dark side of myself. You know, I have a dark side. I do have a dark side. It's my, you know, my rebellious side, you know. I know they kind of like Satanists. It's be Satanism and they stuff. They do be. But I thought it would be kind of like different, you know, Iron Maiden. I mean, you know, respect the Iron Maiden, you know. Let's say, yes, endurance run, I'm ready. We appreciate you, King. I appreciate you. They drive around with it on their cars. You have to look around and pay attention. You're right. You're right. All right, y'all, I got to go right now. I got, I got some place I have to be, but I want you to start. I want y'all to read this book. And... Because it's a very good book. You know, it's, it's, it, 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 has, it has credence to it because the person, he has credentials. That's why I picked this book. I mean, you know, I try to look for stuff where they can't start calling people sovereign citizens. You know how they do. They try to, you know, try to 
blow everything. All that's a sovereign citizen uh, bullshit, you know. So I made it my mission to try to basically combat that, combat that. And that's why I teach the way that I do when I started a university and all that kind of stuff because I got tired of that. Oh, this is some sovereign citizen bullshit. Really? Okay, so basically all the years of research I've done, I'm just a dumb motherfucker. I just can't, I didn't comprehend shit I was reading. And I'm going to be honest with you. If you think this, this is not complex. If you, if you deem yourself intelligent because you, because you're a lawyer or something, this shit is not complex. It's not complex at all. I don't know what y'all talking about. <laughs> you tricking everybody. <laughs> anyway. I got to go. I'm having a seminar. It's going to be in Houston, Texas on the 13th and 14th of January. The registration link is in the description of this video. We're doing pre-registration right now. It's going to be a very good event. I'm going to be there. I'm battling right now to lose my weight because I won't be standing in front of y'all all fat and shit. Talking about me. Security will be there. In case you got a gripe against me. <laughs> anyway. Y'all check this out. I'm going to see y'all on the next broadcast. Cash app is Yusuf L19. If you like what I talked about, I, you know, I'm trying to monitor. You know, it's hard for me to monetize this channel, you know, because I want to get one of them super chat buttons. They don't want to monetize me. You know, I don't get no money from YouTube. Never have. I've never gotten a penny from YouTube. Not a dime. So I don't have a super chat button. So if you want to hit me up with something, cash at me. Yusuf L19. Or you can hit me at paypal.me forward slash Yusuf L. Anyway, peace to the gods. I will see y'all later on this afternoon. Peace, God.